Streaming from Oklahoma's own digital studio, this is Stephen Nairns with This Week in Weather. Hi everyone, meteorologist Stephen Nairns here. Welcome once again to This Week in Weather on this January 13th. Streaming uh, for you from the News on 6 digital studio, as I always say, always greatly appreciate you joining me for another episode of This Week in Weather as we're now getting into, uh, you know, kind of the middle of January and there's still been a lot of like, okay, where's winter? <laughs> we're going back to the second half of December. It has been more spring than winter from a temperature standpoint, I'm kind of discussing how much longer that might last here in just a second. That's kind of well, the discussion will lead into here. And uh, if we've got some changes uh, as far as drought conditions too, because drought is starting to become a big concern here. Of course, as I always start with, uh, if you have questions, comments, suggestions about what you would like to see or heard discussed on this week in weather, you know where to find me with my email address, Facebook page there on the screen. And also, uh, if you uh, are watching these uh, on this week in, uh, these episodes of this week in weather on our News on 6 weather YouTube channel, you can just, you know, leave a comment in the comment section on this video. Uh, going through those every week and reading to see if folks have kind of topics they want to hear discussed. Uh, and uh, always free to hear suggestions. If there's something happening in the world of weather that, that maybe you haven't heard me talk Talking about that you want to hear discussed, uh, feel free to send me those, send, send those my way because I'd love to kind of deeper dive into some of those things. So, of course, like we said, it's been a warm start to January, just kind of picking up where the second half of December left off. Remember what it was like this time one year ago or just, uh, just past one year ago as we got into the second week of January? Well, um, this is where we were this time one year ago with some big time snow, January 9th and 10th of last year, just kind of a reminder of what can happen in January, as you're, I know, as you're well aware, but uh, what, ha what was happening this time last year, uh, we had one of our biggest January snows in years. Uh, on January 9th, 10th of 2025, Tulsa officially had over six inches of snow. Some areas had a lot more than that, and that ended up, last January ended up being our snowiest January since 2010 for Tulsa specifically. Uh, and these were some of the snowfall totals that we had with that snowstorm again one year ago. Uh, it was a range of three to six, three to seven inches of snow across northeast Oklahoma. Uh, and then you got south of Tulsa, southeastern Oklahoma had upwards of a foot of snow with that January snowstorm again one year ago. For snow fans, uh, I know that was that was a very enjoyable one. And look, I love I like snow too. All right, um, so there's part of me that's going, oh man, that was it was nice to witness. Of course, as you're well aware, winter weather always comes with uh, some problems around here, which we have not been dealing with a whole lot this winter, to say the least. As you're well aware, the last about I mean three to almost four weeks running now, going back like I said from the second half of December to now has been very warm and also very dry. Just kind of a comparison here on this on the screen uh, on the, the the left box here. We're looking at you know the warm start to the year, warm start to January. That left box, that blue box is is the the normal kind of our normal high, normal low for the first couple of weeks of January holds pretty steady. Normal high upper 40s about 48 normal low about 28 degrees. And then on the right side, the right box, the red box is where our average highs and lows have been so far. For the first uh, 12 days of January, when you take the, the highs and lows of each day and average them together, our average high has been about 61 degrees. Average low has been in the 30s. As you can tell, that's way above normal. Uh, I mean, no surprise, right? And we are still through these first 12 days of January. It's our third warmest start to January on record in uh, going all the way back to 1905. That's when reliable temperature records began being kept for Tulsa. So it, it's it's been a warm one and of course it's been a very dry one. As you know, we did have a little bit of rain late last week, thankfully, but we need a lot more. And you know, switching gears here uh, from one year to another, right? Last, like I said, last year, this time we were dealing with some very cold conditions and snow that was still on the ground. And then of course, this January, what we have we dealt with was spring weather and tornadoes. Uh, so last week we had that, uh, uh, last Thursday in particular, uh, we had that day of rain that we needed, but we also had several tornadoes across the state of Oklahoma. Five confirmed tornadoes, uh, four in the central Oklahoma portion of the state, and then one brief tornado that occurred uh, in Winona in Osage County last Thursday. So five tornadoes uh, confirmed for uh, that, that event last week across Oklahoma, which already ties the record for the most uh, highest number of tornadoes in January in Oklahoma and reliable tip, uh, tornado records for the state of Oklahoma go back to about 1950. So we're talking about, you know, 75 uh, years worth of records on that. 
This happened a few years ago. Is why is it not, of course, not exactly this, but kind of an early, you know, uh, spurt of tornadoes in January. That also happened in 2023. We had five tornadoes in January 2023, which set the record. Then we've now tied that record again here in 2026. Uh, and of course, the, the the month is still young, hoping we don't have that kind of severe weather showing up again anytime soon. And by the way, we don't have anything showing up like that, at least over the next several days. Kind of an interesting statistic, Station and I put this together as far as where all the tornadoes across the state of Oklahoma in January have occurred. And I'll show you this because it's interesting how we see where kind of some of the concentration of those tornadoes have been. I'll take this full screen so maybe you can see that a little better, read the numbers a little bit better. Uh, again, like I said, going back to 1950, uh, now when you add on this year, Oklahoma has had a total of 35 tornadoes uh, in January going back to 1950. So the average uh, for, you know, average number of tornadoes in January is less than 0.5 <laughs> uh, for, you know, a quote an average January, just meaning that we don't get January tornadoes that often. As we always say, they can happen any time of the year, it just takes the right conditions. And that's what we had last week. Again, so far we've now tied the record for number of January tornadoes across the state of Oklahoma. But like I was just mentioning, kind of sidetracked here, uh, you see where kind of the concentration of these January tornadoes over the last several decades have been uh, in central Oklahoma and especially here in northeastern Oklahoma. Uh, you see that now Nawada County actually has, out of all the counties in Oklahoma, has had the most January tornadoes. Four, I mean, I know that's not a lot, but when you talk about where the highest concentration of these rare January tornadoes has been, Nwata County, and also Mays County and Sequoia County have had some of the highest, highest number, relatively speaking, of January tornadoes going back to 1950. So it's just kind of interesting how that kind of, uh, how, that, how that lines up, where, those, where these rare January winter tornadoes have happened over the last several decades. So you talk about a, a whip around from typical January cold and snow last January to some spring weather in January this year. Of course, that's also come as as you've heard us discuss a lot with some very dry conditions. Now it, we finally at least got some rain with those severe storms last Thursday. That's basically the all the rain we've had going back to December 1st. We're going about a month and a half back now. Uh, that's these are the rainfall totals since December 1st. And again, pretty much all of this happened last week. There have been a few areas that had some light rains mixed in otherwise. But basically all of us have had the large majority of us rather have had less than an inch of rain over the last month and a half. A couple spots in northern Osage County and southeast Kansas have had just over an inch of rain, which is still not a lot, but at least they've had a little more uh, than everyone else. This is what you're seeing on the screen. This is uh, how far below normal that is. Uh, for this, you know, roughly month and a half stretch. And of course, if you carry this back to 60 days, 90 days out uh, and even further, you, this deficit grows. Of course, this drought has been building on us for a while, even though, as we discussed at length a lot, you know, last year in 2025, we had that record wet stretch in spring to early summer. But then since then, we've had plenty of dry periods. Uh, and so this this drought has been kind of gradually building on us since back in the fall, and it's really starting to manifest itself now. Uh, but again, back to the numbers you see on your screen here, this is how basically how far below normal we are in rainfall since December 1st, about last month and a half. Uh, and, you know, areas, even areas north of Tulsa that have picked up a little more rain than everyone else. You know, I'll take it full screen once more so you can see, read those numbers better. Even areas north of Tulsa, we've had slightly more rain. You're still an inch and a half to two inches of rain behind uh, behind schedule, uh, as, as, as we can put it. Uh, and then you get to Tulsa, we're two and a half inches below normal on rainfall for the last, you know, month, month, or about month and a half since December 1st, like I said. And then south of Tulsa, the deficit gets even higher. Uh, you see from Muskogee to Tahlequah to McAllister and Stigor, you know, three and a half inches uh, uh, below normal on rainfall. Since December 1st, you get to Wilberton, Poto, and Salsa and Fort Smith, more than four inches of rain below normal as far as uh, our kind of our deficit just in this time period. So, like I said, and as you know, it's no surprise that the drought continues to expand. The current drought monitor, as I'm showing you today, and I've mentioned this before, but how this works is uh, the drought monitor, the data that goes into the drought monitor, kind of gets ingested every Tuesday, and then every Thursday the newest drought monitor is released. So I say that saying last Thursday's rains aren't accounted for in the current drought monitor that you see right now. So we'll see if this changes any coming up on Thursday. I don't expect it to change significantly because even though, you know, some areas north of Tulsa had an inch to an inch and a half of rain, the rest of us had, you know, a half to three quarters of an inch of rain, if that, 
that still, I don't think, was enough to really significantly impact the drought, uh, unfortunately, uh, for the large majority of us. So again, moderate drought is what you're seeing basically area-wide in that, that tan shading, that little uh, pocket of orange up around Grove and Grand Lake, that's severe drought. We see the red down in central Oklahoma near Norman and Shawnee, that's extreme drought. Not a good setup. I know that goes without saying. Of course, we never want to be in that kind of drought any time of year. Uh, but this time of year, it, winter time is typically our driest season anyways. That's just how it works out the large majority of the time uh, around here. So that leads us into obviously fire danger concerns building and building on us. Uh, if this kind of stretch run continues here, uh, we are, you know, getting becoming more concerned about wildfire season, our winter wildfire season being possibly a tough one uh, around here. And of course, we saw, you know, at the tail end of last winter, things dried out. We got into some bad wildfire conditions last March before all the rain came back in. Uh, and, you know, like I said, this dry, this kind of dry stress continues. So there's the possibility that the winter wildfire season starts to become, you know, a not so good one around here. So that's something we're monitoring very closely. And the long and short of it is on a fire danger standpoint, until we see another significant rainfall event around here, we need to start having uh, folks be really cautious with outdoor burns, start treating most of our breezy, windy days around here as is pretty notable fire danger risks. We've already been seeing fires popping up over the last few days, and that trend probably going to continue because, again, uh, we talked about this last week, so I won't dwell on this too long, but we have been in that very typical La Nina winter pattern, which has been much drier than normal for us in a lot of the you know, southern half of the country. The wetter weather has been up at times in the Pacific Northwest, the far northern U.S., the Great Lakes, and of course that well above normal temperature trend as well, where the, the brunt of those Arctic air blasts have been continued to be funneled to the north, uh, northern plains and the Great Lakes in the northeast United States. And you've heard me talk about that a lot. Well, here's the pattern that we're in right now. Looks familiar, doesn't it? We still have that uh, strong upper level ridge centered across uh, right now, kind of the, the western uh, northwestern United States, but once again, you can see I've kind of got the, the, the arrows, the bigger arrows drawn on there to show you the stronger uh, jet stream flow. It continues to be that northwest flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which helps uh, steer some of those bigger cold blasts out of central Canada into the northeast U.S. and usually just leaves us with just brief blasts, or, you know, kind of brief cool downs or like a day or two where it gets pretty cold and then we recover pretty quickly where we start to look for the possibility for at least more moisture to return or even winter systems is you're trying to look for that cold air spilling down uh, from the north and then systems from our south kind of pulling some moisture in at the same time. So right now, as the setup is uh, today, again, as we're recording this on Tuesday the 13th, is the, there is a system that continues to slide across Texas, a fairly weak system that's got some moisture with it. But as I let you roll here, uh, by the way, again, you can see where the Arctic air continues to be locked up. and. It, I, even whether we're in La Nina or not, it's not surprising to see that, right? You know where the Arctic air is likely going to be this time of year, but it's just been, it has been very persistent. I don't know how many times you've probably heard me say that over and over again this winter. So again, that system across Texas sliding east, but as I let this roll here in the big picture, you'll notice that they just don't quite match up quite in time. That system to our south mostly stays to our south as the cold front, the first cold of a couple cold fronts that we're tracking comes barreling in early Wednesday morning. It doesn't just it just doesn't really line up with good moisture. So it's again another cold front that brings very limited moisture. Now I think we will have some sprinkles and spots early Wednesday morning, possibly again Wednesday afternoon, but that's about it. We'll let the big picture roll because once again you're gonna see what you've seen many times on this this the big picture here this winter. Here comes the cold blast on Wednesday. Look how quickly it slides off to the east late in the week. Here comes another one as we head towards the weekend. Uh, as another front slides through on Friday and then kind of gets reinforced, the colder air mass gets reinforced into Saturday. Once again, though, it, it, it's a pattern we've seen a lot where that cold air is diving south, but there's not much moisture to work with it. Uh, so we get you know a couple days of pretty cold conditions with some you know real arctic air in the great lakes in the northeast united states that's this weekend and then notice what happens next week it's, it just continues right that that same pattern where it's the northern and uh, the northeast united states and the great lakes bearing the brunt of the colder conditions the southern united states getting warmer and warmer and this is like i said i've kind of let the big picture of the future view here roll well into next week where that upper level ridge kind of recenters back to our south. And again, that's another pattern that would promote another significant warming trend for us. 
uh, with the cold air staying to our north and then maybe the possibility of a few systems trying to at least bring us some rain next week, but that's still a long ways out at this point. So like I put on the graphic here and I've had it on there before, Arctic air to the north, warm air to the south. Sound familiar? I know you've probably you've heard me repeat kind of these same things over and over and over again this winter. It's just been a very persistent uh, winter pattern, uh, very you know reminiscent of, of what you would expect for a La Nina winter that just has kind of refused to break, uh, for lack of a better term. And this shows you kind of the, the long range outlook from the Climate Prediction Center going beyond what I was just showing you on the big picture from the end of next week in the next weekend and possibly beyond. And it's still that pattern that we've been following a lot of. I know I keep kind of repeating myself on it, but I mean, it's, it's just, it's a pattern that doesn't like to, doesn't seem to want to break here in wintertime where we are more than likely uh, still dealing with overall warmer than normal conditions with occasional blasts of chilly air. The cold air remains, at least the sustained cold air remains locked up to the north. There's at least the hope that slightly wetter conditions start showing up. Uh, even with maybe this warmer pattern that looks like it's it's kind of trying to take hold again next week. We, like I said, we really need it to because drought is becoming a big concern uh, across green country. But obviously the long and short of all of this is if you're a, if you're a snow lover, I, you know, I'll, just, I'll just tell it to you right now, the prospects of any big snow systems, winter storms, that's still slim to none until this pattern significantly changes on us. And that's kind of what I'm breaking down here uh, in our headlines going forward um, is, you know, this still, I mentioned this last week and it still rains true this week. This doesn't mean that winter's over. And if you're a snow fan, you go, all right, try again next winter, right? But, uh, but you also know the drill around here. We get past January, you start getting into February. And obviously we've had you pick the year, February and March. Actually, some of, by the, way, by the way, some of our biggest snowstorms on record have happened in March. I'm not saying that's happening this year. I'm just saying that, you know, it, winter doesn't end once we get past January. But the further we get down the line here without any significant winter storms, uh, whether it's ice or snow or whatever, what have you, you know, the more, you know, with the, the clock starts ticking on the possibility for those systems to happen. So, Again, the, that La Nina jet stream pattern that we've been in still looks like it's persisting with brief shots of cold air, the brunt of the Arctic air to our north and east, and moisture remaining fairly limited until something significant changes on that front. Now, there have been some signs in the last couple of weeks, and I won't dig too deep into this today because there will be plenty of time to discuss this, but from uh, you know folks that look at kind of the long range trends, especially the, the, the trends related to El Nino and La Nina and some of those other kind of major oscillations that are happening around the hemisphere and around the globe. There have been some signs that this La Nina pattern could start to break down pretty quickly, pretty significantly as we get towards the tail end of the winter here and then head into early spring. Now, of course, there's a lot of questions about will that happen, uh, would you say quote, in time? to maybe trend the tail end of the winter in a different direction as far as cold and snow goes. That still remains to be seen. Uh, and more than likely what would happen is if we trend towards El Nino, it'd be more of a spring impact as far as, as, um, as opposed to a, a late winter impact. Th there's a lot to be discussed here, all right? So as we go through the line, uh, down the line in the next few weeks, we'll continue to see if that pattern continues to uh, show up. But uh, that would be, if that, trend did continue, that would be something we would monitor for maybe how the tail end of winter uh, starts to pan out from a winter, you know, winter cold and uh, winter s snow precipitation standpoint. Like I said, that's still a long ways away, but the long and short of everything that I just showed you again is, I know, no surprise, is that the, the warm trend that has been persistent, still hanging around, the dry trend still hanging around. We've got brief shots of cold air coming over the next several days. So having said that, uh, the rest of this week into the weekend, some fairly chilly air returns, but the winter precip portion of that is, is still lacking for, for the time being. All right, appreciate you, as always, tuning in with me for another episode of This Week in Weather. Again, always streaming on our News on 6 Weather YouTube channel, and, it, and all of our uh, episodes are archived there as you, if you'd like to uh, go back and, and re-watch some, some of those episodes and, and also our daily forecast updates uh, from our uh, from our newscasts are, are posted um, on that channel as well if you'd like to check those out. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time.
Thank you for watching this Oklahoma Zone Digital Studio live stream from the Bob Mills Weather Center. Stay with News on 6 online and on television anytime for the latest weather updates to keep you safe and informed.